E, bugün ekohidroloji ve Mexico'da yaptığı çalışmalardan bahsedecek bize. Zaten de bu çalışmalar çalışmalarından. E, daha fazla zamanı Ömer'e bırakmak için teşekkürler. And thanks a lot for coming. So the title, uh, my, my title will be the Eco the ecoecology role of solar radiation on landscape evolution in uh, semi-arid ecosystems. Uh, the, it, it may gonna be a, a bit long, apologize, but you may cut me later. Uh, the first, I'm gonna introduce a little bit uh, data analysis in the first part, and the second part, I will go through modeling studies and role of solar radiation and latitude and climate. In a coupling system, when climate, soil, and vegetation topography, all of them evolves, at the same time, under the given uh, climate forcing, uh, the, over the topography, over a till plate, the vegetation and interacts with topography and vegetation also affects the soil type. And there is also forcing here, tectonic forcing, you need an energy to uh, give the shape of the topography. And over the topography, there is a soil moisture or water balance, which is the hydrologic component part. And soil interacts with this hydrologic forces uh, through the geomorphic systems, either uh, throughout uh, vegetation. In here, if we look at how climate affects either topography through vegetation and soil, uh, I don't have too much soil component, but through vegetation, mm, this is my major research area. Mm. Amara, one question. Sure. In, in fact, can you come back to that? Sorry. Ah, you don't have a time element. Oh, uh, uh, we have a time actually here, uh, Jala. So, Where for example, uh, climate forcing in our modeling, I should tell climate forcing uh, can be, uh, our climate is daily, for example. In our model run, I will run my models with 800,000 years, last three of years, the same, okay, last one million year. And then there will be precipitation is almost daily, and then evapotranspiration is daily, uh, runoff productions are daily, I'm taking care of either annual pro production, and then I have a signality, climate signality. So half of the precipitation occurs during the North American monsoon time, July, August, September, rather go through 50% in wet season, 50% in dry season, and then there will be interesting storm durations. All of them, we are actually, we are, I'm in civil, I'm a geology background, but we're hydrology right now, okay? So we, we represent hydrology wonderful. So in, actually we are eco-hydrology, eco-hydrogeomorphologists. So we are taking care of also vegetation. Our vegetation is growing and dying, okay? And in here, soil, for, there is also soil. Uh, we don't have soil coupling very well, but uh, for example, if we are a geologist over the long-term uh, geologic time scale, for example, the quickest response to climate uh, throughout vegetation, maybe vegetation give a response within 1,000 years, maybe a lo slightly longer soil will change. If, for example, you have a background, Davis, uh, Clark, uh, climate, organism, regulate, parent material, or time, so all of them are interact each other. For example, this is a nice example. Uh, I don't, I stop maybe people on, this is my friend, uh, he put a show how vegetation, these are uh, pine, and then this is uh, sagebrush, uh, pines can grow everywhere. I thought that this is the aspect control. Unfortunately, it's not the aspect control. This is the underlying, uh, seems like dolomite. These are alkaline soils because there's an interaction between parent material and overlapping uh, soils. That's why in here, there's only sagebrush. This is a, how soil controls or parent material controls vegetation type. And in here, this is uh, maybe can be examples, but uh, hill slope scale, if you are thinking over a, uh, one dimensional hill slope, either elevation control, maybe there is less nutrient, more nutrient throughout the uh, runoff. For example, this is uh, either nutrient dynamics or soil moisture dynamics, or the depth of uh, a groundwater table depth, they may change the overlying uh, geology. So, sorry, overlying uh, vegetation or ecology. So in here, this uh, figures actually I, I took in uh, New Mexico 2008, one of the monsoon time, if you are looking at closely, one side is, uh, these are uh, juniper pine, these are generally Laria tridendata, creosote bush, and for example, does vegetation and mountain range carry the signature of vegetation and ecological processes? These are our main motivation questions. If yes, what are the main geomorphic characteristics of this uh, signature? And finally, these are current climate or relict uh, or legacy effect are they from uh, throughout uh, past uh, climate. So there is also 
higher component of our research. So our research tools are first data analysis. I will go through and then research evolution models. In data <coughs> analysis, this is a typical uh, one-dimensional representation of elevation. If you draw one-dimensional uh, mountain, for example, there is a, a elevation and then slope is increasing and later on decreasing. There is a change here. So this region represents there is a convex to concave topography. There is a change. This first portion is diffusive processes, which are slope-dependent processes. The second, after the green dot, are fluvial processes. These are um, dominated by uh, fluvial activity, runoff, erosion. So the slope area diagram is, if you plot them on a log log scale slope, slopes are increasing in this region. If you go through from the area, this is zero area. If area is increasing, slopes are increasing up to this, uh, uh, the, after this uh, point. So slopes are decreasing, so in, sorry, increasing. Later on in the fluvial portion, slopes are decreasing. So we call this convex hill slopes, and these are uh, concave valleys. So the relationship is shown as slopes are k times a to the power of theta. A is uh, drainage area, s is a local slope, and uh, theta is concavity index. So this is our, uh, you can go our paper. So in uh, New Mexico, this region is New Mexico. So these are color-coded geologic units. We have different geologic units. So these are Sierra Ladron, uh, last 500,000 here, the age, Sierra Ladron, lower region formation, and this is heterogeneous, different, uh, it represents different colors, and this is Popodosa formation. In here, the vegetation is, as I showed earlier, uh, north facing and south facing, they have different uh, vegetation cover type. If you look at their slope area diagrams, the question is, which north facing or south facing, which one is steeper? North, this is, uh, slopes are plotted as a function of area, and the black dots represents north facing slopes, the uh, white dots uh, represents south facing slopes. Rega um, these are bin points. We are taking all these points. And then finally, uh, north facing slopes, regardless of which, for example, lower Sierra Ladron or higher, regardless of, for example, mostly homogeneous units, they have north facing are always steeper than south facing slopes. And also, the same behavior is represented. Blacks are always steeper than whites. So, in also heterogeneous, heterogeneous basin. So, this phenomenon can observe not only uniform lithology, but also heterogeneous lithology. So the, in, if you look at a little bit closely, this is elevation control ecosystem, Upper Rio Salado, and this is 170 miles west of uh, uh, Sevillata. So in here, this is our basin, these are the formations, and soil texture type, the vegetation, higher elevations are mostly controlled or mostly occupied by forest, lowland areas, either shrub or grass. And we also look at their uh, slope area diagrams, which one, which site is steeper. We just compare the uh, lithology. This is uh, tertiary volcanic sediments, I think. Uh, so, for example, these are the steepest. There is a mm, KCC, TPC, for example, there is a mm, certification. One is steeper than the others. Soil texture, there is also stratification. For example, lawn fonts, the steepest, and especially vegetation, forest, are steeper than shrub, and they are steeper than uh, the gentle slides than grass. And if uh, we look at either aspect control site or uh, elevation control site, for example, if lithology is the same or soil type is the same, forest in all of them, we select the pixels, in all of them, the only one variable is changing. This is uh, vegetation. And if we compare them, this, they have the same soil type, long, and KCC geology, silt loam, silt loam, uh, sand loam, all of them, forest uh, found steeper than uh, shrub and grass. So our findings uh, in aspect controlled ecosystems, north facing uh, found steeper than south facing slopes. In elevation controlled, all land surface properties, either vegetation, soil, and lithology have an impact on, on them, but especially vegetation uh, for, uh, in forested they found the steepest and followed by shrubland and grassland. So our hypothesis is, in, in this region, especially these are small sea basins, hill slopes, so there is a solar radiation. It must be coupled with erosion and vegetation dynamics. 
and it differentiates over long term uh, steepness between north facing and south facing slopes. If uh, there is also another Milankovic site, for example, glacial intergracial site, we are thinking because New Mexico evolved earlier, it was wetter than today. So, but how much we, the paleo, paleo people also, they don't quantify, but it's still wetter than today's um, Nebraska conditions. So change in vegetation, ch change over geologic time scale, are they detectable, uh, the differences in topography across catchments? So our tool is, second tool is, I will go through numerical modeling. Uh, this is, in a nutshell, landscape evolution theory, change in elevation. This is change in elevation over time, the difference between uplift and sediment flux rate. So there is an uplift, uh, and then uh, this is uh, erosion rate or uh, flux rate. So flux rate is a function of either climate because more runoff or more precipitation generates more runoff, but it also coupled with vegetation, it changed vegetation type. So it also, uh, vegetation it affects soil type, and then there is also overlying terrain, uh, which is a function of also all of them and uplift rate. So in briefly, I want to show this, uh, the shear stress is a function of total boundary shear stress divided by Manning's uh, soil divided by total Manix roughness coefficient. In here, this is vegetation component. So you can think more vegetation uh, impede or inhibit erosion. So this is a function of uh, something like anchoring effect. So the second, uh, how we gonna model this uh, in this paper, if you, we go throughout, this is Chihuahua, Mexico. So this is south 27 degrees. For example, when we are looking at, this is north facing side and south facing, Either we go to New Mexico, this is the star shows uh, our study site. Uh, they have different vegetation, and it, it, this is Idaho, and uh, latitude 43, the they have different vegetation settling on north facing and south facing side. So there is an aspect control. And if you look at more example, for example, this is uh, one site in uh, Colorado. So vegetation is different. For example, in here, this is north, north and south facing is denser than south, south facing. So why this figure is different than previous one, if I don't have a time, this is an example from Chile. So that's why in the southern hemisphere, so we are in the northern hemisphere, in southern hemisphere, the phenomena is reversed. So this is aspect uh, controls uh, in uh, New Mexico. How, uh, Annual precipitation is 250 millimeter, so this is roughly 10 inch, and then half of the precipitation occurs during the North American monsoon time, July, August, and September, and this is a uh, close look, so don't think this is a, most probably the relief is here, to roughly 100, 114 meter, I think. So if you look at closely south facing slope, so please pay attention to the vegetation. Vegetation is cursor bush, which established in the uh, second part of the Holocene after the alpha thermal era, so the last 4,000 years. And then the soil is developed weakly, uh, less organic material. Uh, so topography is more dissect, there is more hollow or gully formations. So if you look at north facing slope first, it's greener. There is more vegetation or vegetation is totally different than uh, south facing slopes. So these are, there's, uh, there is a scale as a human. So uh, there, these are ju juniper trees and north facing it's more planar and then it's, it has more uh, organic soil. Soil is totally different because soils interact with uh, vegetation and uh, hill slopes are planar. So if you look at closely, so this is the slope area diagram for this region and then north facing, in, this is we split uh, in three, this is the first region is uh, hill slope, second region, hill slope and uh, valleys, uh, they are combi combined and these are definitely channels, the third region. So in here, in DEM, digital elevation model analysis, the cold colors uh, represent north facing, warm colors represent south facing and the region three, the black dots represent uh, channels. If we pay attention, this is north, south, north, south all channels are evolved on the south facing slopes. And in here, how are we gonna couple uh, 
We need to, we have a model, it's called this Child Channel Hillsop Integrated Landscape Development Model, which was uh, evolved by Ra Rafael Brasgrup in MIT. So in, this is a radiation balance, net radiation is a function of uh, short, uh, net short wave radiation, this is albedo, and then net long wave radiation. The energy balance, this energy will be used, net uh, radiation uh, is used by sensible heat flux and latent heat flux over the long term, uh, drum heat flux is zero. Uh, water balance, uh, the water is used in your bucket, we call it bucket in your root zone. This is porosity times root zone, root zone depth, change in soil, infiltration. This is precipitation actually, which is a function of soil moisture state, EOPA transpiration, and then drainage, deep drainage. So vegetation dynamics are vegetation growth uh, as a function of evapotranspiration, uh, how much evapotranspiration uh, is calculated, and vegetation grows according to this. And so this is growth rate and this is decay rate. Finally, uh, elevation is a change in uplift, and this is diffusive processes, hillsop process or diffusive processes, and then this is fluvial uh, sediment flux. So finally, how do they couple? Evapotranspiration or energy is used. Evapotranspiration is used in your water balance and then it defines how much you grow in your vegetation or in your model. And then the vegetation cover defines your mean roughness. So, and then anchoring effect, how much additional resistance in other terms you are giving to the system. So this is uh, distribution of solar radiation for Seyeta, which is uh, 34 north latitude. This is roughly 200 uh, kilometers south of southern tip of Turkey. So for example, this is uh, the ratio inclined surface and flat surface ratios. So cold colors represent uh, any surface element receives less solar radiation than flat surface. For example, this is north facing slopes. Uh, this, this is zero slope as a function of day of year and slope. In, for example, in the same day, uh, five de degree north phasing slope, uh, July 1st, uh, for example, roughly receives uh, maybe 90% of flat surface. But during the winter time, definitely uh, north phasing slopes receives, for example, maybe 20 or uh, 20, 30% of how much solar radiation is coming on the same day on flat surface. On the other hand, south facing slopes uh, during the winter time, they receive much more solar radiation. For example, up to 1.6 times, depending on slope gradient, uh, hill slope gradient, they receive more solar radiation. This is uh, North American monsoon time. So the difference, insulation difference uh, during the in the northern hemisphere, in insulation difference between north facing and south facing slopes, especially they're huge uh, in the winter season, uh, during the spring or uh, summer season, uh, both north facing and south facing uh, slopes, they receive roughly similar amount of solar radiation. So this is our model flow. In a given climate, uh, solar radiation is calculated, aspect slope, this is elevation change, uh, Uplift is given, and then the ecoidology component of the model the soil, defines the soil moisture, how much evapotranspiration is calculated. It, you also calculate runoff to generate erosion. Finally, you calculate the in geomorphology component, shear stress, and defines vegetation change in biomass. Bio, these are biomass elements. If there's a shear stress, you distract vegetation, you kill some of your vegetation. There's also natural decay in vegetation. Vegetation is either senesce or they are growing. There is the also follow phenology, you're gonna see it. And then uh, shear stress, If is this bigger than critical shear stress? Yes, either detachment capacity, uh, sediment can be detached uh, from the surface or uh, transport capacity. So generally in New Mexico, when you go to arroyos, so uh, dry creeks, you will see a lot of sediments on the floor. So these are uh, sediment transport uh, limited conditions. And finally, you update your change in your elevation. You update your uh, every elements in your model. So in child, the ecoidology component, the confirmation, this is the, in this point, we could confirm for roughly 10 years since 1996, 2009. So this is the 
uh, our model is black circle. These are the precipitation, daily precipitations, and then modeled uh, soil moisture. This is black circle. We have also three pits uh, just in this point. So we capture uh, decays or growths uh, somewhat nicely. The EOPA transpiration rates, we, uh, there is a Bowen tower. We compare them, our EOPA transpiration, especially we capture the peaks, more or less, they're not, they're not very bad, they're satisfactory. And then finally, this is MODIS uh, satellite. We check Leafery index, LAI, and then when we look at them, uh, the modeled uh, Leafery index captures uh, nicely MODIS. MODIS, uh, these are very low values actually, MODIS cannot measure less than 0 0.1. So that's why there is a something like it, yeah, envelope. So if this is our catchment, I took this photo, I showed it uh, in here. For example, vegetation, either in dry season or wet season, this is north, south, our model shows like this. So this is vegetation cover. Um, for example, uh, the dark green colors represent more vegetation than yellow green colors. Uh, regardless of either dry season or wet season, north-facing slopes, they hold more vegetation than south-facing slopes. And if you, you are asking me what happened to erosion rates, this is our collaborators in New Mexico Tech, they were looking at erosion rates on opposing north-facing and south-facing slopes, uh, north uh, Belgium and Colorado Technique they are using, they are looking at either opposing directions, so north-facings uh, produce less uh, erosion rate on north facing slopes is slower than south facing slopes. And also, if you look at runoff plots, these are shows the short term, yeah, according to runoff plots also, uh, they correlate long term erosion rates. So these are, for example, uh, from 10,000 to up to the last, uh, they re evaluate again, so uh, last half million year, the resistance time, I think. So, uh, in, in your modeling, you have to also capture uh, flood because big floods generate big uh, erosion rates or gully formations. In here, runoff plots, this is according to Walnut Gulch data. This is the one of the best sites in the world, maybe. So, according to different uh, flume or catchment, they are measuring uh, last 50 or 60 years, they are measuring runoff production. And the biggest problem in uh, semi earth ecosystems there is a loss in the transmission. So generally these regions, they don't generate enough runoff. So that's why this is our modeling exercise. Uh, the circle, for example, we generate model for 10,000 year in here. So this is the return period, for example, 100 year event. Uh, if there is a 100 year event, it generates roughly 30 millimeter per runoff per day. So we somewhat capture nicely up to 60 year but uh, there is a question mark. How this goes further, we don't know. So there, this is an ongoing research in hydrology, maybe. Please refer to Galdain's paper. So in here, we also simulate our landscape. So we try to understand, this is a function of, this is solar radiation. How are we going to understand? If the chip solar radiation is uniform over the entire landscape or domain, and then what happens if we change it? So the comparison will show us, uh, is it a function of solar radiation? Red uniform, radiation is uniform, that means incoming solar radiation is a function of latitude and slope. For example, how much do they receive on uh, flat surface? It receives the same amount on either north facing or south facing, regardless of their aspect and gradient. However, radiation variable, uh, radiation means incoming solar radiation is changed as a function of aspect and slope term. So this is the only difference. And uh, we have a stochastic climate. There is a white noise. Currently, this region receives 250 millimeter of precipitation. 50% occurs during the wet season, 50% during the dry season. So this is a North American monsoon, July, August, September. Our, this is our domain, typical domain. There is definitely uh, some perturbation on the surface, 60 meter and uh, the highest elevation, 900 by 900. So we have three conditions. We also want to understand what's the role of uplift. So one of them is decaying topography, no, no uplift condition, low uplift, relatively high uplift. As a tectonic mainly a person, this uplift rate is relatively small, but in continental America, these are somewhat okay. Over the long term, it's close to incision rates. Uh, these are from Detier paper, Bill Detier. 
And then this is, if you look at the uniform radiation, if you run, if these are the channels. So this is north, phase, north sign, and these are the channels. Channels are evolved on either side. They are more uniform. However, if you look at variable radiation, channels are evolved through north, which means these are south facing slopes, and south facing slopes are bigger. That's why channels are migrating towards uh, north direction. So if when you are a modeler, you have to run the model. We run the model roughly 800,000 years. So this is uh, age of the topography first, uh, close. And second, topography must reach equilibria. So uplift is equal to sediment rate. The first one is uplift, high uplift, and no uplift conditions. So this is a decaying topography. So mean elevation of the, this R wedge are shown here. So the final snapshots, I'm going to show the final snapshots of this topography. First, uh, uniform, these are uniforms are shown by dash. Uniforms are uh, less conservative or they generate more erosion than uh, spatial uh, variation or uh, radiation spatial conditions. If we look at simulated, these are simulated topographies, this left column shows uh, uniform radiation, Radov, and then right column shows uniform uh, variable radiation. And these are the uh, drainage areas, how much area, uh, area is drained. They show the, uh, they show this upslope drainage areas, so how much they are uh, greener drains this amount of uh, area. So these are the, our basic channels, these are our boundary conditions. So firstly, this is no uplift condition, low uplift and high uplift condition, again, uh, uniform radiation and variable radiation. Very first, there are more enhanced uh, headward valley development on uh, radiation on conditions, more channels first. For example, in here, one, two, three major channels. In here, there are always additional one more channels. Secondly, maybe more interesting, uh, radiation on causes more valley asymmetry. For example, in here, valleys are evolved on north direction. New valleys. Yeah, new valleys maybe. So, but these are uh, weak so south facing slopes. That's why they are evolving through north direction. And finally, enhanced valley asymmetry due to in here, for example, asymmetry is up to here, asymmetry more evolved and more, more valleys. So uplift rates, higher erosion rates promotes more asymmetry. Actually, if uh, we go through very early, uh, incoming solar radiation increases uh, in higher uh, slopes. Higher uplift rates generates higher slopes because you have more energy and then you reach equilibrium. And finally, you will generate more asymmetric uh, asymmetry in also incoming solar radiation. So if we look at their slope area diagram, these are uh, model slope area diagrams. So this is geomorphology portion, slope area plots. This is slope and mm, area. So this is uniforms are black circles, north facing slopes are uh, blue and reds are south facing slopes. No uplift, low uplift and high uplift conditions. All of them are north first, north facing slopes, blues, are steeper than south facing slope. In here, here, for example, the high slope is 0 0.10 meter per meter, for example, and as a function of uplift, uh, it's increasing. Finally, uh, uniform radiation is changed between north facing and south facing slopes. The vegetation component is uh, north facing slopes. This is vegetation cover. Uh, the scale is the same. Uh, uh, y-axis is the same, and north facing, for example, these are channels, these are high slope area, uh, uh, these are hill slope areas, north facing, they generate more vegetation than south facing slopes, in, also here. But the difference, the gap is also increasing as a function of elevation. Finally, over uh, gentler slopes, they reach uh, somewhat equilibrium because when they approach uh, flats, or low angle gradients, even there is no not too much difference between north facing and south facing slopes. So uniform radiation, it's 
change between both of them. So in here, there is a slightly uh, geology, also hydrology control. So because there is no solar radiation control, but due to more area, for example, uniforms, uh, if area is increasing, there is more hydraulic connectivity. That's why they have, they produce more vegetation. How do you explain, how do you explain this large scatter for the small areas for the vegetation? Uh, the scatter, the small areas, you observe some scatter. In here? Yeah, how do you explain? Um, most probably it's a function of uh, also slopes are changing. Uh, so you have, you have each one, in here, you have both end areas, uh, sorry. In field slopes, slope can be different, they can have to explore more. So there is there's also variable in field slope elements. So this is uh, emerging soil moisture patterns. For example, this is a literature example. So the typical uh, soil moisture variance is this is mean soil moisture and spatial variance of soil moisture is limited by wilting point and saturation. They maximize in the midpoint and they, they, they minimize towards wilting point and saturation. These are typical examples. This is uh, hypothetical. This is uh, Great Plains example or Simex example. Uh, I think what is wilting? Sure. So I'm sorry, maybe this is too. Uh, building point is when plant wilts, die. So this is a soil moisture state, plant is dying. So they, they cannot recover again. But it means that plant cannot take the cold yes, yeah. working strength of soil moisture. There is a particular pressure, water pressure, the plant drops, and so the plant does not necessarily die. It's just a sort of uh, change its shape. Sure. Right? That's so the, the, they cannot recover. From that point, they yeah. cannot they, they cannot recover. So extreme end is after the building point is hydroscopic uh, point. Uh, One thing means plants die. Yeah. Is that what I understand? Yes. Well, you need to. I'm already here for that. All right. Thank you. Yeah, plants, plants die. If it's going more drier, it's called as hydroscopic point. If it goes more drier, okay. okay. So, and this is a modeling example. In our model, I will go through. So this is our model, 100 years event, uh, 100 years uh, snapshot of the model. This is how our soil moisture, we plotted here is two circle. One of them is, uh, for example, uh, drying phase or uh, green phase. First, uh, you know, if it's a uniform, soil moisture state is changing in the, only in this direction. However, the temporal pattern of uh, spatial radiation so, for example, stage A, very dry. In here, soil moisture stage A. So, these are north facing, south facing. The darker colors represent more soil moisture. Uh, lighter blue should represent less, uh, less soil moisture. And then after point A, during the North American monsoon, so it's getting wetter. It's becoming wetter more uh, because of more precipitation. It's getting wetter. And then stage B, for example, this is especially very um, channels, uh, they have, they hold more soil moisture. This is hydrologic network because you have uh, a lot of precipitation and uh, it's not too much aspect control. And then if this drain uh, generates runoff, it will drain to the next cell, next cell, next cell. And then like a riparian system throughout your riparian or river corridor, this, uh, it's getting wetter. So this is more hydrologic network. <coughs> And then later on, it also dries again. So during the senescence, for example, this is stage C. So we have also typical, as I showed here, uh, this is maximum coefficient of variation in soil moisture state. And, but uh, in here, the minimum coefficient of variation, also minimum soil moisture, minimum coefficient of variation, but maximum soil moisture state. So if you plot similar graph for vegetation, so in here, vegetation, so the start of the year, for example, they die and then they grow, and then final they grow. If vegetation is too much, for example, they grow, this is the maximum one of them is plotted. How do you know about measuring the vegetation? Sorry? What's your measure of vegetation? Uh, this is vegetation cover, sorry. How much of the, we had a grid cell, how much of them is uh, covered by vegetation, the plant cover? 
But so you this take is into account the Liferi index also? Yes. Yeah. So this is which so is some of that. Yes. So in here, this is uh, grass. So I'm sorry, maybe I, oh, I, I skipped this portion. We have only single uh, vegetation here. We have only grass. So our, our grass, we, we are calculating leafery index. There is a conversion of leafery index, how to convert it, or how much biomass as a gram per square meter, I can also tell. And also how much is uh, bare soil is covered by bare soil, the cell, how much of grass. In here, so for example. It's not biomass, by the way. You're not taking into account uh, biomass at all. No, no, no. Uh, we, we, have, uh, we are taking care of here either above ground and below ground. We calculate for that and dead biomass, green biomass, all of them are root biomass, all of them are calculated. But in here, the uh, dead plus uh, uh, live biomass, they represent total vegetation power because both of them are effective on impeding shear stress. So you have a fictitious uh, grass uh, species? Uh, not necessarily. This is uh, the C4. Specific species? Yes. Or, yeah. This is Botella grassi, blue grama. C4. Okay. So, C4, yeah. yes, C4 because uh, grasslands, uh, C4 is evolved. So, in this region, so in here, this is our, uh, for example, this is our circle. First, um, we show also, uh, for example, in here, the maximum vegetation cover 70% uh, if there is a too much uh, rain. But in, for example, stage A, almost zero, but huge variation, north facing are, but these are very low values. Point B, there is interesting, after uh, North American monsoon, monsoon hits, there is a lot of precipitation on the surface or soil moisture. So right now, vegetation is not a function of uh, solar, uh, sorry, it's not a function of soil moisture because you have a lot of soil moisture. And in a short period of time, uh, in here, if you look at this north facing and south facing, north facing, they have lighter colors than south facing. That means north facing, holds less, so, uh, less uh, gr uh, grass cover or vegetation cover. But this phenomena is reversed sooner, the next time step. Most probably this is less than a week. Because in here, when you hit precipitation hits, so this is a wonderful era for south facing slopes. They have energy, a lot of energy, and they have enough soil moisture, so there is no limitation. Remember uh, photosynthesis. So uh, photosynthesis is limited either by vegetation or, sorry, either by rainfall or, or water or uh, sunlight. So th that's why there's no problem in uh, this region. This is semi arid already. There's no sunlight problem. So in here, uh, this is uh, very interesting. So this doesn't go forever. North facing again holds. Um, denser vegetation canopy than south facing slopes. So in summary, uh, vegetation and biomass, they conserve our model. In New Mexico, increased steepness of north facing slopes generates more valley asymmetry. And this is attributed to the um, eco uh, geomorphic development of the landscape. The correlation of or co development of topography and vegetation pa patterns show soil moisture and vegetation patterns consistent with field observation and other more detailed models, differences in biomass, vegetation biomass, and south facing slopes growth with the rate of tectonic uplift. So, uh, well, should I finish or uh, what, what's the interesting portion? Are you interested in Yanukovych's style or? We're interested in everything, but we don't have the time. <laughs> okay. So maybe we should, is that okay if we end it up here? Sure. sure. If you want to show one or two slides that. There's so if, uh, okay, sorry. If you look at uh, what happened to over the global, for example, this is a global example. Uh, this is Northern Hemisphere, this is our model. We have different uh, hills of asymmetry index. This is uh, throughout American Cordillera. In American Cordillera, so north facing slopes in the Northern Hemisphere, for example, are st steeper than south facing components in the uh, in the mid latitudes. Similar is happening in also southern hemisphere, but it's reversed. So this is one of them. Well, one thing I, I assume that you're finished. Sure. One thing I would like to ask is, I have not understood the use of the model. Everything you told us mm -hmm. is what I have learned in geomorphology anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, without any quantification, that north slopes are steeper, that they have more vegetation, 
in the northern hemisphere, it's the opposite of the southern hemisphere. What did we learn from these models? The impression I got is that we learned nothing. Sure. So what is the use of the model? So uh, very first, uh, is this a, um, if a setback, for example, I will think not uh, the comparison. We, I have a chance, yes, this is a function of solar radiation. Uh, yeah, but this was, I, no, I, no, 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 that's my whole point. Mm -hmm. the, the fact that northern slopes mm -hmm. get more energy than the, the, less energy than the southern slopes. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they are moister, they have more vegetation, therefore they're steeper, the southern slopes get eroded faster, headward erosion, is, all of these things are in geomorphology textbooks. Okay, John, okay. I have a question to you. Yeah. Uh, rain shadow. Yeah. For example, this is our question. Yeah. Rain shadow and uh, windward and leeward. Yeah. Uh, in a in windward side, there is more rain and denser canopy. Depending on where you are. Yes. Depending on where you are. But in the other side, less runoff yeah. and less also anchoring yeah. or less vegetation. Which side is steeper? It is. It depends on. What side of the continent you are? Oh no! You see, if, if you are if, if if you are on the west side of the continent, mm -hmm. it's usually the western slopes. Uh, I'm I'm thinking intercontinent. Okay, the uplift is the same way. Uh, I'm not talking about no no nothing to do with the uplift. The climate changes. No no. The, on the east and west side of continent, the climates are different. On the west side of the, on the east side of the continent, okay. you're moist. I said that on the west question. side of the continent, you're dry. It's a caldera, less than a one square kilometer. It's a caldera or yeah. cinderfon, less than a one square kilometer. Yeah. Which side is steeper? In the caldera, yes. The recent faulting is the steepest side. Um, vegetation doesn't control. That's a good the point. Solar radiation doesn't control because caldera collapses so fast that it doesn't control. It may. No, it won't. No, I mean, I can give you hundreds of examples, unless you're dealing with ancient calderas that are no longer active. That's different. Then you, then you treat it as any slope. But in an active cal caldera, it's the volcanic processes that, 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 so, that govern. Okay, so mm, I will think, for example, climate is the same. Yes. Uh, with, with a small scale, for example, yes. Maybe you're right. Um, North slope something? always mm -hmm. gets more precipitation, less energy, if you're on the northern hemisphere. Uh, no, 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 not precipitation. It cannot be more. You cannot say easily. Because, not easily, uh, but rain, usually. You know why? Rain shadow is generally east west. Yeah, 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 but yeah. it depends again. It for example, Antalya, on... for example, Omer Lutu study, Antalya is uh, south, maybe, yeah. south, but yeah. uh, Black Sea is, it can be different. Yeah, well, I mean, the Black Sea rain shadow mm -hmm. falls on the south, and the Taurus rain shadow falls in the north, because that's how they cut the. the, the, the this is this is how they delimit the land, okay? Because the rain is fed from the Black Sea in the north, and it's fed from the Mediterranean in the south, but they're different because your moisture uh, sources are different. So, so it's, I mean, as I, again, what I'm trying to get at is, I have not understood the use of quantification. Sure. Okay. It seems there is no need for mathematics. None. You can do it ten ways, right? No. Observation or anything. Okay. No, 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 no. I mean, this I find totally useless. Well, because, I, I, because I, I do because, see some use there. Yeah. No, because, because you sort of, uh, you know, Understand the relative importance of the no, process. Because the question you posed is how sure are you of your error margins in measurements? So, Whereas if you look at the <laughs> classical geomorphology, the classical geomorphology has reached identical conclusions with the relative importance of the various factors. I have not seen anything here that I had not read in the old geomorphology text. That is what I'm trying to understand. Why is it necessary ja, you know, to go even into partial differential equations? It's totally useless. Uh, may I ask 
to one Please. question. For example, this is also my another question. East and West Pagans, or, sorry, uh, North and South Pagans. Yes. North erodes less than South Pagans. Usually. It can Usually, depend on where you are. But up to when? Because over the long term, I'm a geologist. Yeah. For example, if it's long enough for me, yeah. there shouldn't be any South Pagans slopes. Well, what happens is so, when they fall, when they fall. But they don't fall. So the earth should be flat. You have all, always some east and north and south, okay? So this is, um, I don't know, I don't say directly. Um, it depends, as I said, it depends on what climate region you are. Jela, I'm talking about climate is in uniform, okay? For example, I didn't go to Milankovitch or anything else. Yeah. Okay, climate is uniform. I, I skip the climate, okay? Just I'm asking if north is always more preserving than south, yeah. There shouldn't be any south Pacific slope over the 10 millimeters, for example. No, the, you know, what, what happens usually is as the slopes fall down, mm -hmm. the whole valley flattens out. So in the earth, yeah. there shouldn't be any slopes, for example, older than 10 millimeters, for example. That is not true because the slopes retreat parallel. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, they go. And, and you never have enough. Quietude for 10 million years. So that's why my research is necessary. I want to show one. No, no, no. I, I mean, your research no. is fine. What I don't okay. understand is the use of mathematics. No. I don't understand it. No. The, okay. Uh, this portion you will like it. North okay. facing and south facing cor right. correspondent. Right. Erosion, these are the erosion or denudation rates or erosion right. rates. Right. Okay, you can talk. And north facing, they have less eroded than south facing over the long term. For example, this is also short-term erosion rates. No. This is corresponding. If they reach, okay, there shouldn't be. If this is always eroding faster than this, must be flat always. Yes. This is, but there's, this is not correct. We have always valley, or either reach or valley. Not always. No, come depends, on. This is depends, a depends, depends on, kind of plane. Well, you know why? Because your base level is never fixed. Okay. That's the whole reason. But. Your over, base level changes over, all the time. Over the long term, you can assume it's a uniform or... No, that's my whole point. You cannot assume. Because no, base level is never fixed. I agree. Yes. But, but uh, it's, for example, we are working in one millimeter, for example. Yeah. This is short enough for... No, base... I mean, think of the quaternary base level changes. Thousands of years. Inland, they, they may not be affected. What about the Tarim Basin? In the Tarim Basin, your base level fluctuated like mad in the last 8,000 years. This is, you can't get more inland than Tarim Basin. It's in the middle of Asia. So, Jack, you think like the South Basin, okay? These are. Yeah, the South Basin. Is, but you are within the Rio Grande Valley. In the Rio Grande Valley, your tectonism is moving all the time. So, there is also, if the What's a magma chamber here? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, okay. not, I mean I, forget about the magma chamber. Okay. What you have here is normal faulting all the time. No, yeah. no, no, agree, but if it's okay, uh, we can assume it's a uniform. Okay, as a modeler. Please don't. Okay, no. That's my whole point. Okay. You see, I think you're coming to my point. Mm -hmm. As a modeler, you can assume a lot of things, but as a working geologist, for me, they have no relevance. In fact, I was talking to Urs just. To, about, about an hour ago. There's a beautiful model about the GPS in Turkey. It explains the present motions using present topography. But if you go back 10 million years, the same motions exist. The topography is completely the opposite. The model completely fails. Therefore, I am trying to understand what this mathematics can teach me as a geologist. I mean, this, I think, is good exercise. It's like Masturbation. It's pleasant. Yeah, you, okay. It's, it's There's nothing wrong with that. I know, but it doesn't get you children. But I want to get children. That's fine. That's better. No, 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 no. No, no, no. But I want to get. I want to get results out of my out of my science. The mathematics in the earth sciences has yielded absolutely no use. That wasn't the case last century. No, now, this will be now, 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 now,
Yeah, uh, thank you for that nice presentation. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, uh, my question is actually about the scale. Uh, the, I have three questions. The first one is on the resolution. How do you support the terrain model? Digital elevation model that you use for it. Uh, and do you think it differs if you use nine meter resolution or is it SRT yes. as a much wider? I think the values are changing, but generally, uh, regardless of so, uh, resolution, the nodes are steeper than SARS in yeah. the data analysis. Okay, so, so the small sub or some small sub catchments, they are not changing that much. I mean, uh, your mean elevation or the mean slope range of the catchment that you have. Sure. So, in first, in our model, is 20 meter, I think, grid cell. So we have a uniform classification. For example, if uh, instead of Jalal, another person, hydrologist, may be not happy, classification first is not a uniform. Yeah. You're going to criticize me. And the soil person, hydrologist, will tell me if there is a vegetation that's here, you know, gain or you can't see any, so uh, it must be, it, soil will be yeah. different. So if I'm interdisciplinary, so I have to. Let's say, well, what I like about me. your presentation are the observations. Sorry? They, what you presented. Really, most valuable thing are the observations, you know, rates, the things you measure, like erosion. They are the most valuable things. I mean, the modeling doesn't mean. But the vegetation dynamics is a very simplistic one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, relatively. Not yeah. So that, that cannot be used on any biome, basically. I mean, if you have a very simple case like that with a few species, at most that's okay. But, but if you have, if you take into account the true successional processes, <laughs> then uh, well, you have a complicated picture. But in here, okay. especially in the forest area, for there, example. There is a oh, that's why he's working in the desert. That's why I do <laughs> There is a scale problem right now. I told you, I sorry, told you. Uh, there is a scale problem. So you are talking in grass and competition, for yeah. example. All sorts of things like that. So, yes, it's a simple, uh, relatively, yes, vegetation. And I would like to see the error margins in the, in the observations. So that would be nice if you could do like the like one you just asked. Uh, what, is, what is your error margin? When you talk about rates and things like that, you should always present your error margin and the sources of error. Mm, yes. So, so some of those scatters might, might be due to the errors also. Sure. That would be really useful to know the error margin. But Matt, can you say this mechanism is first order defining it rather than the other one? To respond Jalal, someone like Jalal, if they ask a question, you can say physically I test this, 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 but this is more first order so that someone can learn. Why, in terms of the physics of it, I mean, I think I, I'm a modeler and I get these questions, but I can say, for example, plate convergence rates is playing a more important role than the other one because I test this physically. At least, can you say something like that? So, first thesis, first hints of geomorphology. Okay, yeah. if you are a tectonic person, you are an energy person, uh, these are maybe very negligible for you. Geomorphology is energy dependent. Yes, I mean, as you so, pointed out, yes. it's a science. That's, that's why. So, very first uh, Hillsop scale. I, I have to. So in Hillsop scale, uh, lithology more or less similar. Maybe you also disagree, north is south, <laughs> different than south. I respect, okay? But in any, for example, strata, strata is totally uh, planar. For yeah. example, there is no, uh, what's it, angle, bedding angle or something. And no dip. Yeah. No dip, for example. If it's a unicorn, so I can tell this can be a function of solar radiation. Solar radiation gives its impact. But in this region, there is also vegetation is changing. So precipitation is changing. This is our initial start. So first.